you guys. I'm Venus Monique from the hit crime drama Vindication. And you guys should definitely make sure you're catching the Maurice Brown show on Roku TV. Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Maurice Brown Show. We've got a very special guest today on our show. He is a director, writer, and actor uh, known for The Gamer's Guide to Surviving the Campus Apocalypse 2016, Night Guard 2021, and Two Roads in 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show the very talented Nathaniel Skexnader. What's up, Nate? How are you, bro? I'm doing great, Maurice. How are you doing today? I am doing great, man. I tell you, the pandemic just won't leave. Yeah, I, I, I keep hoping that things will at least uh, settle down to at least an even pace because I, I feel like that it's so difficult to plan things. Like if, if things were one way or the other, that'd be okay. But as long as things stay in flux, we just have to keep adapting to new stuff every day. And, every, you know, it seems like every week now. Yeah, yeah, you know, my wife, uh, in, in the midst of all this crazy stuff, informed me of great news recently, uh, Nathan. You'll, you're not going to believe it. She said, honey, get this, Nathan. She said, honey, we have enough money for the rest of our lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we just have to die tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. And, right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And we'll be fine. We got to be out of here by by midnight. Anyway, yeah, the pandemic <laughs> the pandemic has been crazy. How's life as a director and entertainer? How has life been for you tr trying to navigate through all of this? Yeah, so I, I think um you know, obviously the 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 pandemic and the reaction everything has messed yeah. over a lot of stuff, especially in entertainment. Uh, I think for me personally, uh it, it uh, I'm not saying it was it was a blessing, but there's definitely a silver lining to it for for me uh, that I was able to uh, spend so much time with my my wife and kids um, that, yeah. um, it, you know, it was good to just to slow down for a period of time. And that season where, you know, there's there's like no productions going on at all. Um, I don't really even want to start any productions because I don't know what's going to uh, you know, what's going to what's going to occur you know, a few months from now, if you start loading up for a production, you know, how are things going to change? Um, it, it, it allows me to, you know, just kind of focus on, on a lot more writing. And so I was able to, you know, write some more scripts, um, you know, do uh, do some, you know, fiction writing for some novel and novels and things and uh, things that I wouldn't have otherwise had time for. So, um, it, you know, for me, it's just about, you know, making the most of it and just kind of um, sitting back and trying to be refreshed instead of being frustrated. Yeah about all the things that I can't do, uh, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. I, uh, I totally understand. I know, um, about four or five months ago, I had someone that you're very familiar with in the entertainment industry, Jonathan Wessel on the show. And we were talking about the film, the short film, uh, called night guard, uh, that you were a part of, uh, in, in producing and also, there was uh, Gary Nation and Wayne Matichuk were also a part of that, and I had the privilege of interviewing those two gentlemen as well. Fine actors. Um, this is the Christian version of a superhero film. I, I watched it, and I thought, wow. This is a novel, because like, there's nothing like it in the, in the Christian faith-based uh, industry, this type of genre. And and I and I think it needs to be explored more because the 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 thirty minute short that I viewed had great potential, and I I'm st I'm sitting back waiting for the 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 full length feature film. I, I I sure hope that you guys are continuing to work on that. Tell us a little bit about Night Guard and how fans can see the short. Absolutely. So if you if anyone who wants to see the 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 short right now it's available on youtube if you just Google, if you just type in the search night guard movie it's like the first thing that pops up uh you can also view it for free on redeem tv as well 
Um, so those are the, the two main places that you yeah. can see it. And, you know, what we wanted to make sure it's as easy to see as possible. You know, we're, we're, we're not yeah. trying to hide it under a bushel or anything. You know, it's out there. And just a little bit about the project. It's, it's about a, a young man who is obsessed with this urban legend. This, this person he thinks is a superhero that no one, no one knows exists, you know? And, yeah. uh, and so he is trying to find him, but then he becomes, uh, kind of guilt ridden when he feels like he lets, um, you know, some criminals uh, kill somebody, like he didn't do enough to save that person. And so he feels guilty and he's like, okay, well, I, someone needs to be out there saving the city here. Someone needs to be out protecting people. And uh, <laughs> right. I wasn't enough. And so I need to to do something about this. And uh, so it's about his quest of trying to find the superhero and trying to, um, you know, trying to save people. And you know, something that uh, is passionate for me as a, as a Christian is, yeah. You, know, yeah. you know, can you save people? Can superheroes actually save someone, someone's soul? Because we're, we're all going to die someday and we all have to give an account and, um, you know, saving, saving people, which I think it's great when you're, you know, if you're a first responder, you know, it, you know, EMT, doctors, uh, firefighters, uh, police officers, they, they do a tremendous job. But, you know, in the end, we're all going to die and we all we all need Jesus. And so, yes, um, you know, part of what you don't see in a Marvel movie, which I mean, I love Marvel movies, but part of what you don't see is they say people. But then what? You know, w what is the, the next logical step yeah. after that? Yeah. Well, and that's the case with all of these uh, superhero films. You know, you, you grew up reading these magazines, these comic books, and and then you just like you're you're, you're looking for a savior. You don't know that you're literally looking for a savior of your soul. Yes. But that's what we're really looking for. And so we get that idea when we read Superman, when we read uh, Sp Spider-Man and uh, the Hulk and all of these, these awesome characters growing up. I was a, a crazy comic book fan growing up. I always wanted to see it translated to film. <laughs> the best we had, I was a kid growing up in the 70s. That tells you how old I am, Nathan. But I, I, we, the best we had was Batman and Robin with Adam West yep. and Burt Ward. And that was the cheesiest movie I've ever seen. But, you know, that's all we had. So we thought it was awesome. Uh, and so now, and then it, it, it morphed into Superman with Christopher Reeve, which yeah. worked. That was the beginning of the real superhero film, Superman 1, 2, and 3, legendary, and, and then it was on. You know, the comic book world, you know, went off into uh, an, another stratosphere in right. movie. In fact, if you really look at the numbers, uh, I think Marvel, uh, Marvel's, um, good gosh, what was the last one? Endgame is the highest grossing film in history. Right, exactly. And so it tells you the, the burning desire for man to have a savior. Yes. And so by translating it over into the Christian world, I, which I, I just pray that you guys will continue to push through on this, the reality is we're looking for a savior. Jesus Christ is the answer. Yeah. And uh, I, love, I love the short night guard. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking to director Nathaniel Skexnader, who produced uh, the short night guard. I know he's done a lot of other things. We'll get into that later. But if you want to see this film, you you can go to YouTube and just type in Night Guard. It's a 30-minute short, and it involves not only Jonathan Wessel, but also actors Gary Nation and Wayne Matichuk, two, uh, ec three excellent actors. Tell me what it was like working with Gary Nation and Wayne Matichuk. Sure. So I, I think when I was uh, first writing the script for the uh, the night night guard um in terms of we had this character who who is the the um spoil uh well okay uh so the, the the there's this old man character who plays a central role in the uh in the in the short film and yes. right away i i just envisioned gary nation uh because i had seen him in some other things including polycarp and he's just a tremendous actor he um, is he absolutely is and he just he, uh, yeah. And so initially I just, I thought, oh, Gary, uh, if we could get him, that would be, I, I don't know, who, like I could think of a couple other people maybe who I could ask, um, you know, locally to, to, to try out for it. But boy, if we could get him, that would be perfect. And, yeah. um, and, and he said, yes, 
which was you know a big deal because he, he had worked on a lot of feature films he had worked on i think fox's legends legends and lies so we're talking about somebody who i, I wasn't expecting would hop on to a very small production uh, yeah. working with people who are basically basically unknown um uh-huh. and, and a lot of young people as well and our, our director was very young um kind of, kind of our whole staff you know just a lot of people who we he kind of scraped together from across the country to say, Hey, look, can we get together for a, a, a little bit to, to make yeah. this? So a very scrappy project. And and Gary came along and, and what I was very impressed with, with Gary was how much respect he gave us. And I'm not saying that we were, we were worthy of that respect, but you know, he yeah. didn't treat us like we were a bunch of young ragtags who didn't know what we were doing, but he, um, uh, he was just, like I said, very respectful, um, yeah. put, put in the work, um, and uh, seemed to, you know, didn't phone in performance, um, but uh, did a tremendous job. And I think having him in the, in the movie just adds a, a level of gravitas that I yeah. think if you take Gary away, um, I, well, I think if you take a lot of things away in this film, you know, a, a few components here or there, it really shows how thin the, the movie is and, and how fragile it was. Um, because, because a, a lot of this, you know, movie for me, Maurice was, a uh, um, it was pretty incredible. It even just got made because of all the moments that, you know, it could have fallen apart, but, you know, God really watched over us in so many ways. And, you know, having somebody like Gary helped anchor the movie, um, and was, it was a huge blessing for us. And I think yeah. really shows in the movie, um, with Wayne, that was also kind of a crazy interaction, uh, or crazy time. Cause I had approached multiple actors trying to play the villain of the story. Yeah. And, then we're getting down to, I don't know, maybe a month away from production. I mean, we, we have these dates locked off. We still don't have this main character, you know, a main character or more main role in this movie cast. And I just yeah. kind of threw out a, a Hail Mary casting call. <laughs> right. And uh, and so Wayne responded and it was it was a good audition. Um, and I reached out to him. I, I started talking to him a little bit and I'm like, I don't think this is going to work. I don't. I don't know because it, it, it and you interviewed Wayne Maurice so yeah. you know <clears throat> excuse me how how nice and genuine a guy Wayne is um, yeah and he he doesn't seem like he's he would play a villain at all he doesn't mm-hmm. seem scary or menacing uh he just seems incredibly kind so yeah. but you know we we, we kind of had options and, and so it was like hey Wayne come and be a part of this and I didn't know how it was going to go and 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 I also Right. Wayne had never met with us. He never worked with us for all he knew. We were just a bunch of ragtag young people, you know, who didn't know what they were doing either, which is partially true. And um, <laughs> okay. and he comes on set and he does a fantastic job. And yeah, he he is menacing in the movie and he he does play a, a mean character, which is totally opposite of, of how he actually is. And yeah, and it just shows how much range he has as an actor. And um he also was incredibly committed to doing the stunts in the film. Mm-hmm. Um, and we said, okay, well, you know, Wayne, we'll, we'll put in a stunt double here. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure that. And he's like, no, 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 no. I, I want to be part of it. I, I want to do the stunt. And, <laughs> yeah. And that, I just think it also helps with not, I mean, it helps with the realism. But I was just impressed with how committed he was to making the film as good as it possibly can be. And uh, also just as a person, so encouraging on set. And um, mm-hmm. it, it just it's just a great guy. Yes. Thanks, Nasir. Yes. He he's uh, uh, thank you, Nasir. Yes, he is a very good person, and he he pulled it off. Though I had a uh, Nicholas Rice on my show yesterday, who's working on the film Preemptive Strike, and he's a super nice guy. He's really physically fit, and he's a martial arts uh, you know specialist. But you know he 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 mentioned that you know. Acting is one of those things where you just have to be able to take on another persona. You know, that, that's the sign of a good actor. It's like you can, you, you can tap into things that are not you. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, we talked about Heath Ledger and how he had just really given himself over to the role of the Joker. And the difference between secular uh, entertainers and, and fa- Christian entertainers is that you know, we have to pray those demons off of us if we decide to get into a certain role, and and that's that's the beauty of knowing Jesus Christ. But our our obligation 
as actors is to be able to take a role and pull it off. And Wayne Matichuk had me fool. I mean, I thought he was a bad guy. I was afraid to interview him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, man, this is going to be tough. Super nice guy. Yeah. And uh, he pulled it off. That was he. That was a really great short, and we're going to be praying you up that you're able. What are the chances, Nathaniel, of you you guys being able to turn this into a feature-length film? Sure. So right now, what what we would like to do, and what we're working towards right now, is actually turning into a TV show, okay. um, a, a miniseries um, okay. of sorts. And gotcha. um, so we have uh, multiple scripts working that that we're working on right now. Um, and, and it's a launching pad from the, uh, from the short, we would probably redo some of the elements in the short. Yeah. Um, and, and then, you know, you know, Lord willing, we would do, uh, you know, like an eight, eight episode miniseries, uh, around that same sort of idea. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that's where we'd like to take it instead of a feature length film. Not that I'm opposed to a feature length film, but I think especially with, um, how well some things are going with like the chosen or vindication, um, that, that there might be a, a good avenue for for a streaming series. Yes, and 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 the uh, star of Night Guard was Jonathan Wessel. Had him on the show uh, four or five months ago. Tell and he did an excellent job. He was very convincing. He looks like a guy that could p- could play a Peter Parker in a, a Spider Man film. No question about that. What was it like working with Jonathan Wessel? Jonathan is a really fun guy because he's so interesting and he's so quirky, but he's also extremely committed to to acting and mm-hmm. getting into the character. And he, I, I, I've, I had only seen a couple of things that he had done prior to doing Night Guard. And, um, you know, it took some convincing. But once he was on set, he is the exact I mean, he, he kind of has that Peter Parker type vibe in the movie. Yeah. And so we, he pulls it off where he's. Um, he's kind of wimpy um uh, (laughs) not not in person because because jonathan actually is a is a committed stunt you know uh, stunt man and and actually Uh you know is committed to to lifting weights and 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 working out but he plays such a pathetic character at the beginning (laughs) of the short Um, right but he also has this um i think some some subtle strength about him especially later in the in the short film and he he really he really taps into that uh, which makes it kind of convincing about how this kind of this, um, you know, kind of pathetic character can can rise up and to become uh, a hero. And um, yeah. and so working with him was really great because not only did he have that, um, he bring a great job of um, that weak, um, sincere type character to yeah. the role. Uh, he was also extremely committed on the stunt um side of things so he actually is in the suit doing uh his own stunts for 95 percent of the movie so um so a lot of that what you see is actually him um doing doing stuff that most of us couldn't really dream of you know we're like hey someone else do this uh but uh, <laughs> right so so i really just appreciated you know just how, how committed he was to every aspect of the role and he really put in the work and put in the time um, to know the role, to know things inside and out, and also is just such a kind and fun guy to be around that, you know, he doesn't stress you out on set. Um, yeah. and you know, it's just really encouraging, uh, n- no, uh, and, and right. I've worked, I've had a chance to work with Jonathan on, on several other projects since that time. And it was really working with him on night guard that made me go, Oh yeah, I want to work with this guy as much as I can because, uh, of what a great guy he is and, and how, um, serious he is about acting and his craft. I, I love the the faith based world of entertainment and movie making. I think that the credibility and respect for faith based films is increasing, and I think more and more secular viewers are starting to become somewhat intrigued and interested. But my question to you, Nate Daniel, what would you what would be your opinion of the present state? of faith-based films right now in America. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think you're, Maurice, you're hundred percent right that w- there are some filmmakers who are definitely starting to um, kind of rise up, right? We have the Kendrick brothers a long time. We, we know that they yeah. can deliver, uh, but we have the Irwins who are now kind of consistently um, yes. producing very high, high, co- high quality content. And it, even if you were yes. a secular audience member, you'd be a fool to, ignore them just because they have the the faith based label right because uh, right. they are very talented uh in fact the, the the movie that i'm most looking forward to 
uh, this year is American Underdog. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. I had Brett Varble on my show about a month ago, and he's playing uh, Steve Mariucci in that film. And, of course, the lead actor who was, uh, I can't think of his name, but he was the... the Zachary the, Levi, yeah. Yeah, he's, he was in Shazam. He was Shazam, and he yeah. he's done some really you know high-level uh, stuff, and he's going to be Kurt Warner. So, yes, that's a great example. Yeah. And then on the, on the kind of the... Oh, there's also um, uh, John Gruders, who did uh, Sabina, Torture for Christ, that mm-hmm. just came out, which is incredible, and okay. and it's it's really good. Uh, and on the small screen, you got Dallas Jenkins, you got Jared O'Flaherty doing the vindication. So yes, th- th- there are some filmmakers who are very talented who are beginning to emerge, but there's n- there's not enough of this yet. I-, I think there is definitely some um, aside from some of those people, and, and there are others who are talented, but I, I still think we're there's a gap in talent that needs to grow. So before the the faith based yeah. And especially as, as a producer, and I can appreciate this, I'm sure you can as an actor as well, where we look around and, and you can only work on so many things. So if you're the Kendricks, yeah. you're the Irwins, you're Dallas Jenkins, you, you pour so much energy into a few projects. You know, we need we need more really talented, we do. Um, uh, you know, Christians who are empowered by the Holy Spirit to to yes. make excellent pro- product. And I, I don't I don't see that yet. Uh, yeah. And that's what I would yeah. I'd like to see more. Uh, because I think I think we're making progress, but, but we're not quite there yet. We're not quite there yet. We we are making progress. Uh, I had Christopher Sean Shaw on my show uh, earlier in the summer, who uh, directed and produced ch- uh, Church People, <laughs> starring Thor Ramsey, which is a very good faith-based comedy, and that's another genre that's not explored enough in the faith-based world, and that's comedies. And it's a very uh, good comedy, and it talks about mega churches and so forth, but there's a really strong story in the midst of the, the lighthearted joking. Um, and, and, and Christopher and Thor both were on my show, and they made mention to the fact that in creating the budget, in or- you had to be able to throw some money at some named actors to get them to bite. And, and and there were some guys in there like uh, Donald Faison who was in who was in the uh, TV show Scrubs and in, um, remember the Titans. Uh, there was one of the two of the Baldwin brothers were a part of it, and so they, they they had some some names in there. But you have to be and 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 it's no slight at at any actor that feels okay. I'm worth a certain amount. That's that's, that's part of the business. But in order for faith-based films to be taken more seriously, you know, budgets have to increase. And, and, and brothers and sisters in Christ who have the wherewithal or means to contribute need to contribute. You know, it, it's, just, it's just that simple. I mean, we, we have, if we have the ability to step up and assist our br- brethren in the uh, entertainment community, uh, that we need to do that, and and I think that uh, that's starting to happen slowly. You mentioned the, the the Kendrick brothers, and then there's the Irwin brothers, and I all, often have Jared O'Flaherty, who's the creator of Vindication, a a faith based crime series that you can see on Pure Flix or Redeem TV or Amazon Prime. That stuff is not your typical faith based, uh, you know, production. But once you watch it, you go, oh wow, these guys are going to the light. So it, it's all about being able to draw in secular viewers. I, I totally agree with what you said, Nathan. You know, we are, we're not there yet. We're, we're, we're not there yet. But I do thank God that we're getting closer. And I think by having open conversations like this and a forum like this uh, more often and, and talking with fine you know, young directors like yourself, uh, who's got a lot of ability, a, a lot of... Uh, writing e- experience and and expertise, you know, people need to know who you are. I mean, you're out there, man. You know, you're 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 producing good content, and and more people need to be aware of you. So, but I agree with what you said. I think we're not there yet, but thank God, we are getting there. I, I let me ask you this: Do you think, Nathaniel, that maybe there are some improvements that you feel perhaps that need to be made to attract? more secular audiences? Yeah, so that's a, I think that's a really good question. And and you're going to have to help me out on this one, Maurice, because it's okay. something that I'm, I, I'm, I'm still thinking through because as we think about how do we, how do we nail our target audience and something that I, I struggle with is right. You, you've got um, the Kendricks who 
um, the, the right. I, I, I love Kendricks. I love the, uh, I love their documentary. Show me the father that just came out. I thought it was excellent. Yes. So, um, yes. so it's not a knock against them, but I think they, they, they say that their, their films target the church, right? They're to serve mm -hmm. the church. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's true. But I think that more specifically, they target a very specific type of churchgoer, you know, okay. it might be kind of the middle-aged churchgoer, you know, as someone said, and I think this is true. Uh, but, you know, I have lots of uh, friends in that, you know, 18 to, you know, 45 dem year old demographic that it's that it's that coveted demographic. And, <laughs> yeah. And you talk to them and they're not and these are Christian friends. They're not they're not getting excited about the Kendrick Brothers movies. Hmm. They, they, they may or they may not go see them. What they are getting excited about is they're getting excited about Endgame. Right. They're getting excited about Avengers and about, you know, um, you know, Free Guy or John Wick. And right, yeah. those are the movies that, and these are, so I think what we need to ask ourselves is, is as, as we think about attracting a secular audience, how do we get our audience, you know, connected and excited about what we're doing? Yeah. And yeah, I, I think that what I would, what, and right, my theory is we, we need more genre films that are, are, that are in the Christian area. And what right. I mean by that is, right, we need more vindication. We need more. Look, there's a Christian guy and he's hunting down a serial killer or mm -hmm. there's a Christian guy who happens to be um, a superhero or mm -hmm. there's a Christian guy or, or a woman. Right. I'm not I'm not trying to, to, to discriminate here. And they're mm -hmm. in a really good comedy. And it's not that this it's not that we view um, our Christian films solely through the ends of everything has to be faith based. But it's like, how can things be real life where we have main characters that are acting out their faith in real situations? Yeah, that that rings true. And I think if we can get, um, right, you know, my, my 25 year old friend who's going to go to see Dune, he's going to go see some mm -hmm. of these Marvel movies and Spider-Man. That's right. How, how can he be excited about a Christian film that also has values that he can get behind? Because I think if there's a, if there's a film that he can get behind or she can get behind, yeah. you're going to get the, the secular heads to turn and you're going to be like, Hey, this is exactly what I see in the cinema. Mm -hmm. And, that's exactly what I want to watch. You know, even if there's, yeah. even if I don't agree with all the, some of the Christian stuff, th this is really working for me. Um, and so I, like I said, I, I'm still working out what's the best way to, <laughs> and what improvements we can make. But I think we, yeah. you know, yeah. if we commit to more genre films and also no, no disrespect to these filmmakers, uh, cause I think there's audience for this, but if, if your action film takes place entirely in like a rapture setting, yeah, I think you're losing a lot of your your would be secular audience or or your Christian audience who are going to see, you know, different types of action films and are not going to go see your rapture themed movie. <laughs> anyway, that, that's just my opinion. I'm still working it out. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, no, Nathaniel, I, I, I agree with you. You're making total sense. And I, I don't think there's any um reason to feel bad about that i mean you, you you we all have opinions i mean you you have christ as your savior and that's that's and not only that you're you're outside of a demographic that uh, a lot of these films i'll tell you right now <laughs> you know i think it's it, one of the things that i would criticize about some of these faith-based films is myself personally i think it's really cheesy when they do church scenes I really, I, I think it's extremely cheesy, and you know, if 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 you want to do that, okay, fine. But I, it just, it just seems cheesy to me. And I think there's there are certain aspects of faith based films where, you know, it, it it's like, eh, okay, that's fine, I get it. But the person that we're trying to lure in and get them into the light too, that doesn't appeal to them at all. Yeah, and you when... you made a very good point about. Uh, the demographic of 18 to 45, they're going to films that are much like a, a Marvel film or an action film. You know, Nicholas Rice, who was on my show yesterday, is working on a, an action film called Preemptive Strike, which, quite frankly and honestly, looks like a secular film. But it's really a microcosm of what's happening in spiritual warfare. And so this is a way to get people to go. Because at the end of the day, Nathaniel, we, we're... We're entertainers. People have to be entertained. Yes, yes. That's the point. 
<laughs> and so sometimes we get uh, we miss that. You, you know, we're so focused on, you know, we got to get people saved that we forget about the whole point of this, and that's to be entertainers. So I think uh, what you said makes perfect sense, you know, and um, it, it does need to be improved upon in that regard as far as uh, we made an interesting point yesterday. Actually, um, Nate, uh, Nicholas Rice made an interesting point. He said, because I mentioned uh, The Passion of the Christ by Mel Gibson. That's a rated R film, and, and in my opinion, I think that is the greatest faith-based film I've ever seen. I mean, by far. Yeah. And it wasn't so much about blood and gore and this and that. It was about authenticity. This is what happened. And because it was so real in its presentation, you know, that's the second second highest grossing rated r film of all time yeah right I think, so I think to your point higher, yeah it would deadpool's the only film that's higher yeah so I, I mean to your point i mean i think that's something to be investigated by you know the faith-based entertainment world it's like guys hey we got to be more you know gritty here we got to get a little bit more grimy we don't have to sacrifice our principles but we do not want to to insult the audience's intelligence either yeah exactly i, I think i think you're 100 percent right on the in just like the church thing um the ch because uh as i was writing uh, some scripts for for the night for night guard uh, yeah. i sent them to to uh the director john petrie uh okay. who, who's great and and he was like so, and, and one scene took place in a church's office as they as they went there for for some reason. And he's like, "Yeah, you know what? I'm not feeling this. Let's put it in <laughs> in a soup kitchen. Let's take it out of a, a churchy looking building and let's put it as Christians being Christian, being the hands and feet of our Lord mm -hmm. out out in the real world." And yeah. it, it was like, "Oh yeah, Johnny, you're you're 100 right. You know, and, you know, I'm not sure how I missed this." And and I think that's what we we have to do. It's like you know. Right, because we are called to be uh, salt and light, and and if we just stay in our in our, you know, uh, sanctuaries, that's not yeah. being salt and light. You know, it's how do we be salt and light and and God's hand and feet here on earth, everywhere yeah. we go in our yeah. workplaces and and our homes and everywhere. Well, you know, I have a show that I do twice a week called Breaking Down the Four Walls with you know multiple comedians. Yeah. And, and we're having a Bible study, but we're also talking about our craft as comedians and how do we, you know, marry comedy with representing the kingdom. And, and there, there's a, a skill to that where, you know, you can't, again, insult the audience's intelligence. It's like you're, you're there to be funny. You know, yes. you're, that's your job. You're there to be funny. So tell jokes like everybody else does, you're just not using profanity and you're not using, you know, subject matter that, okay, we don't need to go there type stuff. But you can still tell the same jokes. Are, and so it, it's all about getting outside the four walls of the church. And, and it's like, okay, well, I'm going to go do a comedy show, you know, with, a, you know, <laughs> some guys that, uh, you know, are talking about different things that I'm talking about. And, you know, it's in a regular club. You're just going to go up there and do your stuff and... You know, you, you never know. You might change a life out. I actually yeah. had an experience like that where, you know, a female heckler actually, she stopped heckling me. She didn't even heckle me at all, as a matter of fact. She stopped heckling, listened to my entire set, and told me that my set made a difference. Nathaniel, I wasn't even thinking about necessarily making a difference in someone's life. I was just, I hope I will, but I was just thinking about comedy. But in the midst of that, it it changed her life. But she said, "Oh my gosh, I I'm in a an abusive relationship." And I was just talking about my family making jokes, and she said it just made her look at her life differently. And she did not heckle me one time, and then took the time to tell me. So anyway, we got to get outside the four walls, man. And 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 you, like you said, I mean, we have to be able to go beyond. We have to be the salt and yeah of the earth bad you have the salt light light of the earth and so you're right i i totally agree with what you said there um w let me ask you this nathan what is the biggest thing that you have learned as a director since you've been involved with this that's actually made you better at directing 
Sure. So I think some of the things that I think as as a director and 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 these days I'm directing less and less as I as I realize how difficult it is. Yeah. And and and, and it really is because I think you and something that that I've learned is you have to be able to communicate with both your your cinematographer, right, your director of photography, and yeah. also your actors. And um, acting is not, especially since I learned this, because I, I'm usually a bit part in some things, you know, here or there, yeah. is, is acting is a lot more complicated than it looks. It, it takes a lot more craft <laughs> yes. than it looks. And if you don't understand that language, you're not going to be able to communicate that clearly to, to an actor, and, and they're just going to be confused. Yeah. They're going to be frustrated. Yeah. They're going to be frustrated. Mm -hmm. you, you're, if you don't know the, the camera stuff, your director of photography is going to be frustrated. Um, <laughs> yes. And so if you don't take that time to learn their language, then, right. um, you know, it's not going to go well for you. And so so I think the biggest thing for me is whenever I'm I'm running up against, um, you know, I'm, I'm about to direct a project. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, OK, how do I I need to do some research, man. I need to I need to refresh myself and figure out, you know, how to communicate better. What what do they need from me? Um, right. And, right. um, uh, and usually, you know, it goes smoother that way. And so that's what I would encourage, you know, anyone who, you know, is in the direct, is in the, the directing mode is it's not right. It's not just, oh, I have this vision and we're just going to set things up, set things up and it's automatically going to happen beautifully. It's like, no, you, you kind of need to know and understand what your actors are going through, what your, your camera people are going through and how, right. They need to know. Uh, how to understand your vision so that they can carry it out. And if you can't communicate it clearly, it's not going to go so well. Yes. Yes. Uh, you also did a film called two roads with Jonathan Wessel. Um, tell us a little bit about that project and how fans can see it. Yeah. So I think two roads can be seen on, on YouTube as well. If you look to two roads, short film, it should come up. Um, so I think it's, it was in March 2020, April 2020. So we're talking mm -hmm. about, you know, in the in the thick of the lockdowns, <laughs> yeah. um, everyone is feeling a little stir crazy. I think Nathan Blair uh, had this idea to do a quarantine film festival. And okay. Jonathan, as an actor, is, well, it's like, hey, we should do this. And so he calls yeah. me up. Um, I gave him a few story ideas. We selected the story of Two Roads, uh, which is about a, uh, a young um, professional who is caught in a quandary of uh, an, his job and doing something unethical. And okay. he needs to try to figure out how to um, reconcile the two, especially with his Christian faith. Yes. And uh, what, what happened is we, we roped in some, some actors and actresses. We got uh, Mimi Sagadin, uh, mm -hmm. Carrie Fabian, uh, I Have a Voice role, and then Jonik kind of took the the producer editor side of things yeah and and then we threw it all on jonathan you know to <laughs> to set up the camera to work out okay. all the technical bugs and i just remember you know kind of praying for him going oh man i hope he i hope this actor can figure everything out and he did a great job with all the technical side and with yeah. the acting side and i think it's probably his best performance that i've seen um no disrespect wow. to wow to night guard or any of the other projects he's been, but he yeah. just gives us a very sincere performance. And, um, yeah, you know, considering the fact that it was made with one person crew in the middle of a, of a pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, I, th I liked how it turned out, you know, it's, it's, it's not perfect, but, um, I, I think we were able to communicate the message and, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of how the story of that came, came to be. Well, and 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 I believe it was in uh, it was in his car for the most part of the film. Is that correct? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I watched Two Roads. It was very the, the writing was quite 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 good, and uh, Jonathan, of course, did an excellent job of acting, uh, and I I thought it was it was it was quite excellent. Uh, I, I love the storyline and and you know how things can go. I mean, you know, all you know, all of a sudden, you know, you just need someone. To kind of like step in with the the just the right amount of reason, so you can understand what the heck you're doing, yeah. um, and and so that was that was a, a really good film, and and, and Jonathan is an, is a very good actor, so you you guys work well, and and Nathaniel, dude, I hope you're not gonna stop, man. I mean, you 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 really are good at what you do. You've put together some really nice things, and 
trust the Lord, man, and take it to the next level because, you know, we, we need, and you, you said it yourself, we, we, we need more quality faith-based producers and writers and actors and directors, the whole nine yards. We, we need more. It, we're getting there, but we do need more. And, and Nathaniel, you're one of them. That's why I have you on my show. I've, I've seen your work, and I'm quite impressed by it. You have the chops, man, to get it done and be one of the next one of the next big guys coming onto the scene. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and I think, you know, for, for us, it's, it's, you're right. I didn't do it. I didn't do it by myself. I mean, I've had a, uh, I've had two siblings who have been work, working with me, like every single project who's done a great yes. job, Jonic. And, 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 and as you know, right. Film is such a collaborative effort. And, uh, and I think the, one of the things that has really helped us is, you know, just growing in our faith and yes, I, I, absolutely. And part of it is right. How can we be faithful in the little things um, so that we're ready to handle things in the big things? Um, yes, yes. Because I don't think we can, we can expect to, like you said, take on these big things, um, you know, take it to the next level without first um, being faithful with, with your little short film, uh, you know, yeah. here or there and treating your crew and your cast kindly and respectfully and recognizing that it's not, it's not about us. It's about, you know, giving glory to God in, in everything that we do. And um, so, you know, I, I don't know exactly what, what, what God's plans are for me, but I, I you know, w- with me and the team that I work with, I hope that we're just faithful to his calling w- whenever, whenever that is, whenever that happens next. And, and Nathan, you'll let me ask you, how did you get started on this journey of filmmaking? Yeah, so I think for me it was kind of an accident. It was not something I had I had purpose to do. Yeah, but it was. I think uh, Philip Telfer had, had going had gone to our church, and he he has wrote. You know, he has a, a ministry all about media and mm-hmm. media discernment. And okay. so he, he he had been called away to, uh, to pastor a church in Texas, so which was our loss. But he had kind of instilled in us um, a a little bit of that bug for for, for making films. Mm-hmm. And uh, kind of my sister wanted to get more into filmmaking and she does a lot of the technical stuff, a lot of the filmmaking stuff and like, uh, especially the camera work. And she's very gifted, but I do kind of more of the writing things mm-hmm. and we kind of put our, put our minds together and just started making just little, little movies. And r- they're pretty bad. I had no, uh, <laughs> no uh, illusions about that, but, um, okay. and, and then all of a sudden we just started getting connected with more and more talented people and doing more and more ambitious things. And, uh, for us, it was kind of a snowball, and mm-hmm. um, that's you know that's how it started for me. It was it was not on purpose, but it just it was like hey, the, you know we're having a lot of fun. We're we're making a lot of friends. Uh, we're we're growing closer together, honestly, as yeah. um, brothers and sisters in Christ. And and I think when you and Maurice, you you've been on set before, and I think mm-hmm. when you've been a part of that, it's something that you want to do over and over again, despite how exhausting it is and how difficult it is. Um, because yeah. it's such an en- enriching experience. Well, I, I was on set with Jen Goss and Chandler in 2016 for the film Love Different, directed by Anthony Hackett. And yeah. uh, Tommy Ford from the TV show Martin was in there, too. He yeah. made it a lot of fun. But, you know, you do. You get you get drained, dude. A lot of people don't understand whether, whether it's acting or co- Um, it's that way, you know, and so I watched, I, we did 14 takes on a long, it was the longest scene of the film and had more verbiage. It was intense and they just wanted it from different angles. Yeah. You know, well, let's try, we wanted to take it from this side and so forth. And it was, I, I tell you right now, it was my first time as an actor and I had a ton of verbiage and I said, I gotta, I gotta nail this thing. I got Jen Gotten here, who's in the Oscar-nominated film Frost Nixon, and I got Tommy Ford from Harlem Nights and Martin and all that. I said, I got to nail this, and I did. I Thank God, you know, and I thought, ah, I did it, and it's like, okay, let's do it again, and I'm like, <laughs> we're going to do it again, and so, yeah, I, you're right. It can be draining, but you know what? As soon as they say go, you love it. You love it. You're ready to nail it. So you're right. It's not something that you really get tired of doing. 
Um, it's a great point you made there. I mean, this is something that we love. We just love this stuff, man. Um, what, what would possess someone to go up onto a stage and try to make 150, 200 people that you've never seen before in your life your best friends for the next half hour on stage cracking jokes? Yeah. <laughs> just not, not everybody <laughs> gets off on that. You can only do that if that's just something that just drives you for whatever yes. reason. Yeah. Um, Nathaniel, before we get out of here, I want to ask you if, the, if there's any advice – that you could leave with prospective young aspiring writers out there or producers or directors, uh, particularly in the faith-based world that are, are thinking about, you know, going after this as a career. I think um, what, what I would, the advice that I would give that has served me well, um, that it's, it's not so much advice, it's things that something I've learned um, mm -hmm. is that you as a, as a filmmaker, regardless of what you do, is to dream big. Don't, yeah. a lot of people, I think I've heard a lot from filmmakers sometimes that, uh, you know, I don't have the money to do that, or I don't have the crew to do that, or, you know, so therefore either A, I'm not going to do it, or B, I'm going yeah. to do something small. And, yeah. and I think push yourself, you, you know, just you know, try to make <laughs> yeah. something good. And, yeah. And, and I think with Night Guard, the reason that is uh, it's as good as it is, and is that we we did crazy stuff on that film, considering our our, our very modest budget, and okay. considering our resources, is we we poured everything we had into it. We did just you know I I, I don't have time for all, for all the the crazy stories and stuff, <laughs> but okay. um, it, it was wild, and so we we could have taken a much laid back a much safer approach to the project mm -hmm. but i think especially with with uh Jonic, our director is he has a spirit of well why can't we do something why yeah. can't we do this and it's not just a why can't we it's a i'm gonna help find a way to make this happen you know Amen. on a on a cheap way and so i think having that resourcefulness um and a just a spirit of you, you know let's just say yes to as many things as possible you know we're gonna try to make this um this project as high quality as possible. We're, we're not just going to shoot this this film in a living room. We're gonna we're gonna go to a bunch of different locations. We're gonna yep. make this the highest looking production that we can. N not, I mean, because also we're we're trying to make a high quality production. There's um, mm -hmm. and there's a verse in Proverbs that says, "Look, if you um, do you see a, a man who's skilled in his craft, um, that man is gonna perform before kings and not strange people." And I think yeah. far too often yeah. we're playing before strange people because. We, we we don't we don't commit enough and i would like to see if so if I, so if i met anybody i would say hey look you can you know push yourself more yeah. than than what you think you can because you you probably especially if the lord's on your side you can you can accomplish a whole lot more than you what go. you thought you could that's right there's no doubt about that man all, all we got to do is take that baby step and put one foot down in front of the other and and let him take it from there all he's asking us to do is to move by faith because he's the one that gave us the idea, whether it be a script uh, or whether it be, uh, you know, an acting job or what have you. You know, we're doing it. What we do, we do in his name, in the name yes. of Jesus Christ. That's what we do. That's why we do what we do. And so, yeah, it, it he'll, it's all about having that faith. You know, I, I, I've got <laughs> a script in my mind. I told Nicholas Russ yesterday, I haven't put pen to paper yet because I'm thinking about the huge undertaking of writing a script. And because and, and, I, I got a lot of respect for you guys. What, what you guys do, I mean, actors just show up. But what you guys do, man, the writing, the, the directing, and all of that stuff, the coordinating of beginning to end, it's huge. And there's a lot of rejections. And you write your script. And they go, ah, that's not good. you got to write it again. I want you to fix this, fix that. And, you know, I think uh, Nicholas Rice told me yesterday he had gone through 22, 24 rewrites. Yeah. And, 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 it's, and then you got to get funding. And it's just so much stuff. But if you have faith, if you're willing to trust the Lord, he'll get it done for you, you know, and, and it's all about how intentional that you want to be with your, you know, your ideas. So I, I've got mad respect for, for guys like you, Nathaniel, who are behind the scenes that are directing everything. I always have. I'm like, I'm like I don't know how you guys do what you do. It's so much stuff. 
involved. But uh, at the end of the day, like you said, it's all about trusting our Savior, Jesus Christ, to get it done, and, and that is how we do it. Yeah. Um, how can fans follow you, Nathaniel, on uh, social media or by website? Sure. So, right, I, I'm definitely most active on on Facebook at Broken Record Films. Okay. Uh, so, if you just look on that on Facebook, it'll come up. It's our, it's our page that I post any news or updates about anything. We have okay. a website, and that's pretty, you know, it's it's BrokenRecordFilms.com. Uh, it's not we're not quite as active on that, but uh, okay. definitely the Facebook page if you want to keep up with, um, uh, you know, Night Guard or just other things that we're we're working on in the future. That's the best place. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking with director Nathaniel Skexnader, and uh, if you've enjoyed our conversation, you're like, hey, you know, those, those guys are pretty cool. Those, those are some cool dudes. Well, like and share this video and, and subscribe to the Maurice Brown Comedy Channel and any social media engine that Nathaniel Skexnader is a part of. Now, if you came in at the very end of this and you're like, oh, I missed it, by gosh, it's okay. You can watch the whole thing tomorrow about midday on the Creative Motion Network on Roku TV. See the whole thing? Don't worry about it. He, uh, Nathaniel, directed, uh, produced, I mean to say, uh, Night Guard, and you can also see Two Roads. You can check those out on YouTube. Uh, I highly advise you check it out. It's awesome. I'm going to be praying you up for Night Guard, dude, that you either get a series or a feature-length film, because that's got huge potential. I also want to let everybody know that later on today at 5 p.m., you can check me out with these fine comedians as we break down the four walls. We're working on Mark Chapter 15 today with Christy Condor, Scotty Kay, Felicia Frazier, Don Davis Womack, Cornbread Robinson, Michelle Van Dusen, and June Colson today at 5 p.m. So come back and check us out for that. And uh, finally, once again, we've been talking with the very talented director, Nathaniel Skexnader, on the Maurice Brown Show. Nathaniel, this has been a great conversation, and I, I surely do appreciate you being on the show. And may the peace of Jesus Christ be with you and your family, brother. God bless you. God bless you too, Maurice.